So this video is going to be an overview of how notifications work on iOS and Android. And we'll start with permissions. Um, Android doesn't require you to ask for permission to display push notifications. You're just given permission by default. But a user can revoke permissions um, at any time, either for your whole app, for a specific channel, or for a channel group. Now iOS requires you to ask permission from the user before you can display a push notification. The only recent change to that is uh, after iOS 12, you're allowed to send quiet notifications, which are just notifications that are only visible within the device notification center, and you don't have to request permission for that. iOS has three permission states. The first is not determined. And that's the uh, status when somebody first installs your app and you haven't asked them uh, for permission to send push notifications. The other two options are granted or declined. And after you ask the user if you can send them push notifications, they can either grant it or they can decline it. And if they decline it, then you can't ask them again. It's a one-time deal. After they decline it, if the user wants to get push notifications from you, they have to manually go into the iOS settings app and allow your app to send push notifications. You can create local notifications or remote notifications. Local notifications are ones that are, are created on device and remote notifications are ones that come from a server. So a, an example of a lo local notification is a timer. So say you have an app, you set a timer, you know, notify me in two minutes from now. That is something that you can create on the device, schedule two minutes from, from the time it was created, and then the app will get a push notification in two minutes. The remote notification is, is the one that's much more common. You know, it, it's one that gets sent to you from a server based off of, you know, basically anything, any reason you decide to send a push notification. Your push notification can have a, a visual notification, you know, like what you're seeing on your phone. If somebody likes a post and you get notified that they like it, you see it. But you can also send a push notification that's just data. So you don't actually see a visible notification, but the app does get notified with some incoming data. And then you can do things in the background like sync uh, a message, you know, sync a message or, or something like that. And you can have a combination of both. So you can send a visual notification that also includes some kind of data. After you've sent a notification, you can update that notification later um, instead of creating a new one. And if you need to get rid of that notification altogether, you can cancel it. So then it'll just be removed from the notification center. You can set up a listener to handle background notifications. It works a little bit different on iOS than on Android. So on Android, you have a headless JS task that runs um, separate from the main app that you can do some processing on there. On iOS, the device will silently start up in the background and then you can um, make some network requests or update local storage. So how do you send a notification to a device? Well, you can think of it, there's two separate ways. You either send a notification to a specific phone or you send a notification to a group of devices. If you wanna send a notification to a specific device, the first thing you have to do is when that user launches the app, you need to get that device token and save it to your server somewhere. And then when you're ready to send the notification, you send a notification with that token so it can be delivered to the specific device you want. Now, the thing is, tokens are assigned to a device, so you may run into issues if you have more than one person using the same device. If one person logs in and then you save that device token to their you know, account on your servers and then they log out and then a new person logs in, you don't want that second person to get notifications for the first person. Best practice is when somebody logs out of a device, you need to clear out the device token, and you also need to send a request to your server to clear out 
that save token. So then when the next person logs in, you register the new token on your server for this new user. You can also send messages to multiple devices without needing to use a specific device token. And with Firebase, you do that by subscribing to a topic. So the person still needs to launch the app so you can subscribe them to the topic. But then once they're subscribed, you can just send a notification to everybody that's subscribed to that specific topic. And then you can also allow users to unsubscribe to that topic if they don't want to get notifications. So now you send a notification. What do you do when somebody taps on that notification? Well, the default behavior is just to have the app open when somebody taps on the notification. And that's simple enough. But what's really interesting is doing things with deep links. So take, for example, Instagram. Say you get a push notification that says, so-and-so commented on one of your posts. Well, that notification can come with some extra data that deep links into that specific post. So when the user taps on it, it takes them to that post in the app so they can reply back to that comment. You can also have quick actions on your notifications. So, so a user can take an action without having to go into the app. So say for example, you have a chat app and you send a push notification that a new message has come in. So somebody can see the message in the push notification and you could add a quick action on there so they can just mark that message as read without having to go all the way into the app. Another thing you could do is you could have a quick action with a text input. So then the person could reply to that message without ever having to go into the app. So that's just a basic overview of how push notifications work for both iOS and Android. Um, if you have any questions, just let me know.